Well, good morning, guys. It is just before 6.30 in the morning. And uh, let's see, I'm going to do two things. I am on Highway 101 heading down to Monterey this morning for a uh, kind of a pre-dive, but it's my, uh, it's my navigation dive checkout for an advanced uh, scuba diving ticket. Next week I'm leaving for the Philippines, so I just kind of wanted to fill you guys in. Uh, you won't see me for a little bit on the K6UDA channel, but we'll be posting stuff on uh, on my other channel, Safety Third Films. So um, go ahead and hit that subscribe button for Safety Third, and if you haven't hit the subscribe button on the uh, K6 UDA channel, go ahead and do that too. I mean, hell, it's free. So this time, I'm uh, doing a video. I originally did this video for my local club, and I thought it was good. You know, at first I wasn't going to put it up for, uh, for everybody, but I thought, well, you know what? It's got some value. So, uh, here it is. This was, uh, remember, specifically made for my, uh, for my book on the Empire. Hello guys, and thanks for having me uh, do the presentation tonight for W6EK and the Sierra Foothills Amateur Radio Club. Guess who I am? Uh, it's uh, great to be here on TV and standing over here somewhere. But really, uh, thank you. Thank you guys for letting me be the second fiddle to Bob Heil, who I know you guys wanted to hear tonight and you really don't care about hearing about me, but I'm here to talk about something that uh, is fairly big in my ham radio world, and I know a lot of guys in the club are really, really getting into that, and it's called D-Star. What D-Star is, my friends, is a digital way to communicate um, when the propagation sucks. You can do it across town, you can do it simplex, you can do it over the internet and talk all over the world. Now the beautiful part about this, and it doesn't affect three quarters of our club, but all of you new guys, all of you new hams that just have your tech license, you can get on D-Star right now with your tech license and you could talk all over the world. You could talk to guys from Japan, from Europe, from Scotland, uh, virtually anywhere in the world that uh, other people have a D-Star box. We all know that uh, ICOM came up with D-Star, right? Wrong. The Japanese Amateur League came up with D-Star several years ago. ICOM was just the first manufacturer to adopt it. And then along came Kenwood with the, uh, with the D74. Now this really took D-Star and the handheld market up a huge notch. Uh, instead of like the ICOM ID51, the D74 uh, is, is a tri-band radio two meters, 220, and 440. And yes, we can probably cobble together a D-Star repeater on 220 and really fully utilize 220. The D-74 also is a full APRS radio, unlike the ICOM radios, which use DPRS, uh, which is kind of a one-way ping 
of the APRS system. Yes, it lets other people know where you are, but this one lets you fully communicate with APRS using text messaging and all the other goodies you can see, objects you can see other people, uh, create objects, do everything you want to do with the, uh, with the D74. The D74 is also a wideband receiver. So you can actually go out there and monitor HF frequencies. You can monitor damn near anything you want with the D74. This has become absolutely without question my favorite HT. This sounds fantastic, both analog and on D-Star. It took the D-Star world kind of Set it, uh, set it on its ear, and ICOM is now playing catch up with its codecs uh, and, and the way that they're putting together D-Star radios. For you guys that are uh, all hot to trot and thinking about DMR, we'll talk about DMR a little bit too. Uh, this is the Alluance HD1. I've done another video about it. But I'll tell you what, as good as this radio is for a DMR radio, these things are still purpose-built as a commercial radio, which is great if you're in an enterprise situation or you're in public safety. Not so great if you're in ham radio and you like to program your radio on the fly. This, while you can program it, on the fly from the keypad, uh, it's a little bit like programming a Baofeng. And for those of you that have let uh, the illustrious Dr. Bowen over here um, program your radio, you'll, uh, <laughs> you won't be any better off with this one. Tonight, I wanna concentrate on the D-Star radios. And we might have another night where where they'll have me back, uh, hopefully not as a substitute teacher, <laughs> but, uh, and we'll talk more about the DMR radios and how to program them and what it all is. But suffice it to say, in the internet world, um, they do allow you to do about the same thing, which is talk to other stations uh, you know, across town, across the country, in other parts of the world. So both of them will do that. The DMR radios will get you in a whole lot cheaper than a D-Star radio. But when you get to the analog side, these things sound like crap. Uh, anybody who's heard me on, uh, on our local repeater here talking on one of my DMR radios, knows full well that these things are, um, they're dirty and they, they just don't sound good on an analog repeater. While both of these actually sound fantastic, these are real ham radios. And I highly recommend that uh, if you're thinking about one of these digital radios, you spend the extra 150 bucks and come up with at least the ICOM ID51. Uh, you could probably pick them up used for a lot cheaper now. And I can help you do that if, uh, if that's what you want. The, uh, the D74, is it cheap? Hell no. This thing is so expensive. This is, it's a boatload of money for a uh, handheld radio. These things are 500 bucks. But 500 bucks is getting you a tri-band radio with APRS, D-Star, and a wide band receiver. So guys, let's talk a little bit about the software side because uh, that's kind of where in the, in the digital world it all comes together. It all comes together on the internet. And around here, we have two repeaters that we can hit. I can hit, uh, I can hit the Folsom repeater very easily from my truck 
and the ID5100 uh, that's, that I have mounted in the truck, and I could talk almost anywhere in the lower half of the county. Not so much on a handheld. It's very hard to get in on the handheld because the, uh, the Folsom repeater is quite a bit, quite a distance. Now, the W6CX repeater on Mount Diablo, also with a, uh, with a, a, a home mounted uh, antenna or a mobile antenna, it's fairly easy to hit as long as you've got a look down the hill. But I don't rely on that. I, uh, for most of my D-Star and my DMR work at home, I use one of these. This is called the open spot. And there's, and these are just a simple little box, very, very easy to program. And I'm gonna, we're gonna talk about that right now. So this is the uh, main status page of the open spot. And right now, this one I have configured for D-Star. You'll notice right away that up at the top, it's kind of like a log, and when you're in call, it shows you in call or standby. It shows you the active configuration, D-Star, uh, DMR, whatever you're in. It'll show you the frequency that you're on and uh, what you're connected to, which I happen to be connected right now to XRF 002 Alpha. The next tab that we bring up here is called the Connectors tab. And this is kind of where all the magic happens. So we can uh, tell the open spot if we want to be on a D plus reflector or a homebrew DMR reflector or a fusion, uh, fusion setup. We could go in there, we could go to uh, all these different uh, these are the D plus reflectors that I'm scrolling through right now. And then we'll move on down and these are the XRF reflectors. And these all come pre-configured on the open spot. So each one of these numbers or these reflectors also has a module. And in the XRF world, module A is kind of where you make a contact and then you can move off to module B or C. Uh, but you can have up to five different modules for each one. The next tab is the modem settings. This is where you decide whether you're going to run a D-Star repeater, a DMR repeater, or a Fusion repeater. In this setting, you're also going to be able to pick your uh, frequency that you want to transmit and receive on. You're going to uh, configure the station ID. And there's a bunch of other settings that I'm really not going to get into right now because it just bore the hell out of you. Anyway, moving on to the settings. Uh, you could set up a bunch of different uh, profiles. So you could pick between, say, D-Star and DMR and have everything pre-configured and switch uh, very quickly between the two of them. Uh, you can uh, set up your network settings. And for my, uh, my purposes here, I use uh, a, a subnet. A, a, I use Google. <laughs> and it likes it and it doesn't lock up. Anyway, you can... Put in your location settings, uh, there are special DMR settings, special D-Star settings. Everything here is configurable and you can just get that all set up. The beautiful thing is, is once you've got this thing uh, hooked up to a router, you can actually use your uh, iPhone or an Android and get in there and set up all these settings on the fly, anywhere you are. So moving right along, to get started in D-Star, you're gonna have to register your call sign so you actually have a call sign <laughs> and be listed in the ULS. Uh, I am going to suggest that if you're going to register on D-Star, you're going to use the W6CX machine to register that is the closest one that is doing registrations you only want to register one time 
Uh, you'll go in, you'll fill out, uh, fill out this form here, you'll create an account, fill it out, they'll verify you, and you'll go in and you'll finish your registration. And these settings here, uh, you'll put your call sign and you want one that's blank, one with a C module, one with a D module, and that's really all you need to do to get yourself set up and then you'll be able to use the gateway on a repeater. The main dstarinfo.com page uh, is where you're going to find the vast amount of information about uh, reflectors, repeaters that are available. You could download resources. It has a wealth of information and I, uh, I highly suggest if you're interested in this, go out, take a look at dstarinfo.com and uh, just start playing around. The website has a full listing of all the D plus reflectors and there are plenty of them. There's 70 some odd reflectors that are set up under D plus. Uh, a few of them here in the US are fairly active. One Charlie, 30 Charlie, and 14 Charlie. Um, there's other stuff that's set up for nets and regional stuff and different countries. So anyway, have a look around there and, uh, and go play. Now, dstarinfo.com also has a full listing of all the repeaters uh, that are listed for different areas around the world that are registered, uh, approved D-Star uh, repeaters. That is with the ICOM repeater systems. Now, the D-Star system also has a thing called DRATS which is a digital, um, digital mode that you can do email, uh, set, uh, send files, send and receive files, and the DSTAR Info website has a full getting started with DRATS, so you can do messaging. Uh, it's great for MCOM and ARIES type of applications. Another something you don't get on the DMR side. Now DSTAR is a very, very big world and uh, to find a voice in that very big world that you want to talk to, you need somewhere to look. And so the D plus monitor is there so you can take a look at what's going on in the world of DSTAR in real time. Now all these call signs are coming, coming across in absolute real time there. So if I key up my radio, it's going to show up uh, right there at the top and it'll keep scrolling down and go away eventually. And when D-Star is very busy, that could take seconds or it could be up there for several minutes. But anyway, that's one resource for you. Now, if you happen to have a D-Star enabled uh, HF radio like the ICOM uh, IC7100 or the 9100, or a flex radio, uh, you could participate in the uh, in D Star over HF. There's no repeaters, there's no internet, there's no nothing. Uh, you just get on, and here is a QSO finder that somebody came up with, and there's nets three days a week uh, for testing D Star over HF. Something new that I just recently discovered. Uh, that is, in my opinion, one of the biggest things in, uh, in the D-Star world is the X-Reflector uh, setup. And this is a whole different set of reflectors. Kenwood now uh, supports it automatically in the D-74. And what's so special about these reflectors are they're open source, which means uh, you can start your own reflector if you want to or a club can and you can have a, a reflector for a club or whatever organization you want uh, they have what are called constellations which are groups of reflectors that are kind of strung together and they're all kind of uh, put together 
and they have some incredible nets on uh, on the X reflectors. I've done a previous video about it, so I'm not going to get too far into this, but uh, just let me say that this is a lot of fun, and I've had some of the greatest QSOs on, uh, on D-Star over here on the X reflectors. Along with the X reflectors is the uh, D-Star Facebook group, and uh, consequently uh, the Truckers, Travelers, and RVers group on Facebook, which uh, makes heavy, heavy use of the uh, X reflectors and they have nets, they have a, uh, uh, an RV net once a week. Just really cool stuff. There's a lot of files up here and a lot of resources. People can answer your questions and they share all kinds of D-Star information. And what's so cool about the XRF side of things is they are now beginning to integrate DMR and D-Star into the same net so you can actually get on either uh, D-Star or DMR, whatever your flavor may be, and participate in these nets. So this barrier between the two modes is really starting to break down. All right, guys, that's enough for me. Um, thanks for having me do the presentation tonight. I'm, I'm kind of... Uh, I thought it would be kind of fun to do it like my show. And for those of you who haven't seen my show on YouTube, well, now you've seen it in person. Anyway, guys, I'm Bob, K6UDA, and I'm out of here. 7-3 to my brothers at W6EK.